name is Grady King, and I am with Oklahoma Christian Church Resources, and my guest today is Carlos Gupton, Dr. Carlos Gupton, good friend, uh, a dear co-worker with Hope Network, and is the director of the Doctor of Ministry program at Lipscomb University. Welcome, Carlos. Thank you, Grady. It's good to be with you, my friend. Thanks hey. for letting me join you. It's good to be good to have you here. So one of the things I want to kind of mine your your expertise on is this idea of how we understand church as an emotional system and what, how it impacts leaders and key dynamics because we all feel the stresses and anx anxiousness in our culture and how do we help people understand mm -hmm. this systems kind of thinking toward church so you just take off and I'll interrupt you every once in a while yeah well thanks Grady um you know, it's kind of hard to know exactly where to start if you just got, you know, a few minutes to talk about emotional systems. But let me start by underscoring the word emotional. Um, when, when, we're, when we talk about working with churches and particularly talk about dealing with the issues that are in front of us, uh, maybe even a conflict or whatever it might be, we have a tendency uh, to think of if we give them the right content it will take care of things. Mm. Or if we follow the right process, it will take care of things. What emotional system says is that a lot of times the need is not content or process, but understanding the uh, complex uh, web of interrelatedness among the people and the emotional processes that are occurring among them. And we, we know that's true relative to family systems. I mean, it, it is so easy for us to see that relative to family systems. If you've got, so let's say an issue arises between a husband and a wife, and uh, one of them presents the correct content to deal with it, or another says, well, why don't we approach it this way? Uh, if people are highly rational about it and everybody's highly functioning, okay, now that works. But what if there is a history of uh, difficulties or maybe some other kinds of triggers that are going on, which mm -hmm. is the case for a lot of us, we realize that a lot of times to be able to deal with those kinds of issues between a husband and a wife, between parents and children, you have to deal with the emotional processes that are underneath that. Well, what emotional systems does is it acknowledges that that same dynamic that you have to acknowledge between husbands and wives and children and parents and that kind of thing happens in organizations mm -hmm. and particularly in churches. And, um, and it, it, it's a very, very important thing to see that um, we are highly emotional. And um, now another piece of this is to understand that um, the emotionality of our systems can't be understood in linear sense. Wow, that's that if there's a system, if there's something going on in a church, it's not like A is causing B is causing C is causing D is causing E. Um, and that's especially true relative to church systems. If you got preacher A over here and you're in that linear understanding of things, then that means that whatever's going on here at E started at A. It started with the preacher mm -hmm. and his behavior. It started mm -hmm. with the elders and his behavior. When in reality, you need to see it not as A, B, C, D, E. You need to see it as a circle with A and B and C and D and E. And there's all this interrelating going on. And so for that reason, you can't just pay attention to content and process again. You've got to pay attention to the relational dynamics that are occurring between the people and the you know, what is often sometimes referred to as the emotional field. This so, actually gets this yes. actually gets back to Bowenian theory that's called field theory. Anyway. Right, right. And yeah. sometimes, depending on our religious heritage, some her you know we're a Bible-based heritage in our particular right. tribe in Churches of Christ. And as a result of that, we yeah. think if we just study enough Bible and quote enough Scripture and give them enough content, as you say, then we can solve the problem. So you talk to us more about, you know, that interrelatedness and how do we go about, once we understand it, how do we go about recognizing it a little bit and dealing with it? Well, um, 
you know, two things along those lines relative to emotional systems. Um, and that is to focus on healthy interactions among your members. Mm -hmm. Very good. And to give them the tools to be able to relate to each other more meaningfully, especially when something triggers their anxiety and they may have a tendency to react more automatic or automatically instead give them the tools to be able to pause and to reflect and be able to process their issues in a healthier manner with each other and for leaders to understand that in times of high anxiety people are not going to be at their best uh, and leaders are not going to be at their best and so for leaders to prepare for the reality that when a church is dealing with tough issues especially when there is an external culture out here that is highly anxious and that's bleeding into the church. People are not going to be at their best. And so what leaders have to do is they have to start that process of behaving more rationally, more holistically, more healthfully through being what is referred to as a self-differentiated leader. Wow, that's a big uh, word, self-differentiated leader. Yeah, now let me, uh, that, that's an Ed Friedman term. Uh, actually, it's, yeah, it is an Ed Friedman term as well as others, but let me describe what I mean by self-differentiated leadership and how important it is here in this particular climate. And I want to talk about two pieces of emotional system theory that would be really helpful there. One is the self-differentiated leader. Imagine it in this sense. Uh, I'm not an electrician, but I have checked this with those who aren't electricians and they say this is real. Okay, so, so here we go. Let's think about a string of Christmas tree lights. You know, the kinds of things you wrap around your mm -hmm, Christmas tree mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the Christmas season. And there are some strings of Christmas tree lights that when one goes out, they all go out. Right. And you don't know how to fix it until you have to go through and test every little bulb <laughs> in the system. Yeah. That's what's called a series connection. Okay. But then there are other strings of Christmas tree lights that have a different kind of electrical circuitry called a parallel connection that when one goes out, the rest of them stay on because each individual light is connected, you know, more or less independently to the power system in mm -hmm. that way. Imagine self-differentiated leadership in that way, that if you have a highly anxious system, that they're in a serious relationship with each other and they're not acting right. They're, you know, they got, you know, gossips and secrets and triangling and all this kind of stuff going on in their church and they're you know, reacting poorly, they're polarizing with each other over all the things that are happening within the culture today and that kind of thing. Well, they're in sort of a serious relationship. And if ministers and elders um, assume in a case like today that all you got to do is give people the right content, <laughs> all you got to do is give them the right process and all that's going to be solved, no. What has to happen is fundamentally the main contribution that a leader makes in that case is to be a self-differentiated leader that you can be a part of that anxious church, but you yourself are a non-anxious presence. So you are connected to the people and you listen to their pain, you listen to their concerns and so on, but you don't get caught up in it. And you maintain yourself as a resource, as a thoughtful, calm reflective person who relates to everyone equally, both those with whom you agree and those with whom you differ, um, where uh, everyone can see you as someone who uh, has high regard for them and interacts with them meaningfully and respectfully, and where while other people get lose it with each other, you don't lose it with them and they can't lose it with you because you, you've got, a, you got this long fuse and you, you have built up your capability to be able to interact with people who are highly anxious without you becoming anxious yourself. And that's why it's referred to as self-differentiated. You are being yourself. Right. And you are being who you are in that environment, but you are differentiating from the highly anxious behavior that may be going on in the system. And so that's, that's one important piece. That's the thing.